Good morning, good morning once again. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do apologize for the technical difficulties uh, that we were having. The devil is a lie, but also there's wisdom, and wisdom says, you know, we got to prepare and do the right thing. So we thank God for that. Uh, we, uh, we thank God for everything. Amen. So, uh, but we're going to get this word out. We're definitely going to get this word out because it's a word that I think is going to bless your soul. Again, welcome to Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church where Jesus is Lord. Uh, thank each and every one of you for coming in and to, uh, to, for viewing this message. I think it's going to be a blessing. I think it's really going to take you to a whole nother level in Jesus' name. Um, I am Pastor Steve Dennis from Ebenezer. We love you so much where Jesus is Lord. Hope to see you very, very soon. Uh, we thank you so much. Um, as of right now, let's go ahead and get in the word. Amen. Because I don't want to waste any time. Uh, let's just get right in the word. If you have your Bibles again, if you would turn to the book of Exodus chapter 14 and verse 10 through 13. And uh, you should already be there by now. Um, you know, we uh, had some difficulties, but uh, they're corrected now. And so we're able to uh, we're well able to get this word out. Amen. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 10 through 13. It says, as Pharaoh approached the Israelites, uh, looked up and saw the Egyptians coming at them. They were totally afraid. They cried out in terror to God. They even told Moses, weren't the cemeteries large enough in Egypt so that you had to bring us out here in the wilderness to die? What back into Egypt? Back into Egypt, didn't we tell you that this would happen? Don't you t didn't we tell you, leave us alone here in Egypt. We are better off as slaves in Egypt than corpse in the wilderness. Verse 13 says, Moses spoke to the people, and this is what he said. Don't be afraid. Stand firm and watch God do his work of salvation for you today. Take a good look at the Egyptians today, for you'll never see them again. And this is Exodus chapter 14, verse 10 through 13. And just for a little while, I want to use for a topic this morning, the new norm, the new norm or the new normal. Where do we go from here? What do we do from here? God has allowed us to come out into a land that we have never seen before, a time that we have never seen before, situations we've never seen before, things that are happening that we've never seen before. What do we do from here? Where do we go from here? What do we do? And the church is wondering, where do we go from here? Well, this morning, church, I want to give you directions on what's going to happen and where we're going from here. Amen. The Bible says that the children had gotten out into the wilderness and they were saying to Moses, didn't we tell you to leave us in Egypt? Didn't we tell you to leave us into our situation, leave us in our situation? Leave us in our circumstances. Listen, church, God never wants to leave you in your situation. God never wants to leave you into your, in your circumstances. God wants to pull you out of bondage into the promised land. God's trying to get us ready for heaven, church. God is not trying to make us angry, make us mad, resentful, and say that there is no God. No, God is trying to get us to a place where he can prepare us for heaven. Because listen, church, you can't live in heaven like you're living down here. You must be conformed. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, it says, be, ye be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. God's trying to renew our minds, church. And isn't it amazing when God pulls us out of one era and he takes us to another era or takes us to another circumstance or situation, we're crying to go back to the old situation. Oh, my God, you've been abused for so long that you feel that abuse is normal. You've been lied to for so long that you feel that being lied to is normal. You've been broke for so long. You've been in poverty for so long that you feel like that poverty is normal. Listen, church, poverty is not normal. Poverty is not how God allowed or told us to live. But poverty is the way that the devil wants you to live. God wants you to have some. He said this above all things, all things above your careers, above your knowledge, your your education and everything. He says above all things, I want you to prosper and be in good health. 
even as your soul prospereth. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be a blessing. Like he said to Abraham, he wants you to be a blessing so that you can bless somebody else. Listen, church, your blessing is not to just ride around and shine. Your blessing is to bless somebody else. Because when you bless somebody else, then God blesses you. God didn't bless you just to be pretty, just to be cute, just to have a big house or just to have a big car. God blessed you so that you can bless somebody else. God brings you out so that he can bring you in. Watch this. What is normal? What is normal? Normal, what is normal? Having to trust God in ways that you don't understand. Trusting God in always changing with his word. When you come out of normal, see, it's normal to to stay at home on Sunday mornings. It's normal to not read your Bible. It's normal to not pray. But listen, church, God doesn't want that anymore. It's that time of not reading your Bible, that time of not spending fellowship, good time with God, that time of not uh, obeying God's word. It is over. That was normal. But now it's not normal anymore. What God wants to get back to is going to church on Sunday morning. God wants you to get back to reading your Bible and fellowshipping with him. God wants you to get back to watch this, looking to him before you look to the government. Because we can see right now that the government is falling. We can see right now that we cannot put our trust in the government. Watch this. This is what God told the children of Israel. He said that in the book of, I think it was the book of Psalms, he says, Woe unto them, watch this, woe unto them that go back down to Egypt for help. Woe unto them. You've been on the system for so long that now you're trusting the system over God. You've been you've been down for so long. Now you think down is okay. You think down is up. But listen, church, you got to get a taste of the good life before you can live the good life. You got to get a taste of peace before you can live in peace. You got to get a good taste of love before you can live in love. You that. That is not normal to live in hate, to live in racism, to live in unforgiveness, to live in bitterness, to live in poverty. It's not normal. And I think that God is taking us from the what we call the normal to the other level. The children of Israel said this. They said we were better off as slaves. We were better off as being fed by somebody else. We were better off getting four square meals a day or three square meals a day because we didn't have to worry about whether we were going to get it or not because they were going to give it to us. Listen, church. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen to this. There are some people that have gotten out of jail and they went right back to jail because they couldn't live out here in this life because the jail life had gotten normal to them. They, They were in jail. They were incarcerated for so long that they thought incarceration was normal. How can I prove it? Because they went back in four to six months. This is kind of funny. But I'm going to give you an example. Remember, I'm not promoting this movie now, right? But remember the book of life. I mean, the uh, no, no, it wasn't the book of life. The story of life with Eddie Murphy and and, and Martin Lawrence. Remember that guy that had that, uh, you know. Well, anyways, he was about to get out and go home back to the to the right kind of living. He had been incarcerated for so long and he was able to live that life that he wanted to. That he decided, if I have to be killed, I can't go home like this. So he was trying to escape in, in Martin Lawrence and, them and all of them. They were telling him, don't go, don't go, man. He's going to shoot you. Stop, stop, stop. And he didn't stop. And they shot him and killed him. He said, I can't go home like this. He thought that normal, as a matter of fact, he wanted to stay in jail. And he thought that being in jail, being in prison was normal. Listen, church, before you can get before God could pull, God could only pull the children of Israel out of Egypt, but he couldn't pull Egypt out of them. Mm. That's a word for somebody this morning. God's trying. God, God has taken you out of a certain environment, but now you have to learn to get that environment out of you. The new norm, the new norm. What if we cannot visit our family anymore? What if we cannot hug our children anymore? 
What if we can't go and sit down and have the Sunday afternoon fellowship dinner anymore? Watch this. I'm going to hit somebody right between the eyes. What if we can't go to uh, Grandpa's or uh, what's that name of that one up there in, uh, in Newnan? Um, we can't go to Po Folks or um, what's that? Um, fried green tomatoes. Thank you. We can't go to fried green tomatoes no more. What if we can't do that no more? You know what, church? I remember when we could go in the bank with a mask on and they call the police. But guess what? Now you can go in the bank with a mask and they won't call the police. As a matter of fact, if you go in the bank with a mask, without a mask on, they may call the police on you. Times have changed. Times have changed. And we are in a time now where we cannot get adjusted to the things that are going on right now. The Bible says this. It says that we are pilgrims passing through this land. You know the reason that Paul was a tent maker? Paul was a tent maker because Paul, God wanted to show Paul and through Paul's talent that you are building a temporary place, but you're moving on later. So when God says it's time to move, he'll be able to pull his pull his threads and take off. Listen, church, this is not our home. We are tent makers. We are not meant to build a brick home here on earth. See, my grandmother used to say this. I'd see her lying on the couch and 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 and, and I'd say uh, and I see her mouth moving. And I said, what is she doing? So one day I asked her, I said, I said, Ma, why are you uh, what, what are you doing on the couch? What are you saying? You know, you, you ain't losing it, are you? And everything. She says, oh, I'm talking to my master. And I said, well, all right, then she says, I'm sending up timber so that I'll have a place to live when I get to heaven. See, church, we need to send up timber sometimes. We need to send up timber all the time. Because I, how people are building here on earth when they should actually be building on heaven. You act as if you're going to be here for the rest of your life. You're not going to be here for the rest of your life. And times are going to challenge you. Listen, how does that thing go? Uh, uh, inventions is the mother of um, uh, the mother of inventions is necessity. When you need something bad enough, you'll learn. You'll learn how to change. And if you want to live long enough, you'll learn how to put the mask on. We were serving. We were giving away free masks on yesterday. We was giving away free gloves on yesterday. And I actually saw people riding down the street that didn't have any on. They didn't have anything on. But they didn't even want to take what was free. But I guarantee you they'll go down the street and, and they'll pay for it. But listen, church, we're not just a church that sings and shouts on Sunday, but we are a church that is connected to our community and we love our community. We have to change. It is inevitable. Things are never going to stay the same. Now, see, our kids that's growing up, if they're babies right now, they're not going to understand what wearing, what not wearing a mask is about. They're not going to understand that when you get ready to exchange money, nobody wants to take your, your paper money. They're not even going to understand, watch this, they're not even going to understand that when you go through Chick-fil-A that they bring your meal on a, on a tray and they don't touch anything. When, they put your, when you get ready to pay for your food, they'll stick the little card reader out there and you have to swipe the card yourself. They're not going to, that's what they're going to understand. They're not going to understand where you could just go up to the counter and, and just talk like you want to and, and, hey, I ain't seen you in a long time and give them a hug. Times are changing. This is the new norm, church. This is the new norm. So we have to learn this. We must remember that even when times change, watch this, God does not change. The Bible says he is the same today, tomorrow and forevermore. Yesterday, today and forevermore. God's not going to change. He's not going to change, even though circumstances and situations change. But God says he's not going to change. He's going to continue to be the same. Amen. Well, let me let me just let's go ahead and run through this this message. Watch this. On September the 10th, 2011, we were able to just jump up and jump on an airplane and go wherever we wanted to go without going through security with such intense checking. We were able to, to just be able to, to, to go to the airport and sometimes even purchase a ticket 
right there at the airport. We were able, watch this, back in the day, we were able to even take weapons on the plane if we were going to another place. If we had a, a gun or something, we were able to do that. But on September the 11th, 2011, things changed. And things changed to the point that now when you go to the, to the airport, they're going to check you down. Matter of fact, they're going to scan you. Matter of fact, as it, it, maybe if they haven't started, they may even start uh, checking your temperature. But things are changing. This is the new norm. Don't be like the children of Israel and want to go back to where God has brought you from. Anytime, watch this, anytime God is about to take you to another level, there's going to be another devil. Anytime God's get, God gets ready to elevate you and take you to a whole different place in life, you're going to have to go through something. So, Paul, uh, uh, so James, I think it was James said it like this. He says, think it not strange when you fall into diverse temptation. Think it not strange when you have to go through some things. Because at the very end of the day, it's going to make you a better person. Listen to this. And I want you to really think about this. This, what you're going through right now, is it making you bitter or better? Is it going to make you a better person or is it going to make you a bitter person? People were complaining about being checked at the airport and they didn't want people going through their bags and things like that. But now people are OK with it because it has become the norm. Now it's OK. And if my life is on the line and there's a terrorist in the plane, by God, by all means, check my stuff, man. I ain't got nothing to hide. Check my bags and check me. I don't mind if I have to go to the closet, to the bathroom and, and let somebody, you, you know, do whatever I got to do. But I ain't, I ain't, times have changed, church. Times have changed and we have to change with them. Okay, watch this. When you are from here, it's easy to adjust or to get comfortable to the things that are here. But when you realize that this is not your home, when you realize that you are from heaven and this is not your home, you're just here for a little while. You realize that things may change, but I'm going to stay the same. I'm going to still love God. I'm going to still worship God. I'm going to still praise God. I'm going to still go to church. I'm going to still do it all. At the end of the day, I'm never going to change because I know someone that will never change. He'll never change. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 says, These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off and were pursued or persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were, watch this, strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Church, we got to quit living like this is our home because this is not our home. We have to stop living as if we're going to be here forever because we're not. And 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 your little 50 years, 60 years, 70 years. Watch this. Even your 110 years is nothing compared to eternity. It's not even a drop in the bucket. Somebody tried to explain one time and and um, uh, the difference or uh, between uh, 100 years or, or a lifetime versus forever. And they said, if a pelican, I think it's one of the slowest flying uh, birds in the sky. If he were to take a grain of sand from one beach and fly it all the way to the sun and fly all the way back and get it, pick up another one and do the same thing. And then not only did that at one beach, but all the beaches on the world or in the world then that would only give you an idea of what it might, not what it is, but what it might be like versus eternity. Eternity is a long time. And I'm not going to give up 20 years, 30 years, 50 years for eternity. Because watch this, and I'm just, I'm just being honest. I'm just being right out front and real with you. Watch this. If you go to hell... You're not going to be able to get out on good behavior. You're not going to be able to get out because your time's up. You've served your time. You're not going to be able to get out because somebody uh, paid your bail or whatever. When, once you get to heaven, church, 
Once you get to heaven, people, once you get to heaven, you're not going to be able to get out. It's forever. It's forever. And I want you to think about that. It is forever. So I don't want you to go. God doesn't want you to go. Listen, church, God made you to go home with him, not to go to heaven. Heaven was not even made for you. Heaven was made for the devil and his angels. Hell, I'm sorry, y'all. Hell was not made for you. It was made for the devil and his angels. So I thank God for heaven. I thank God because he loved me that much. But listen, you have to, you, you got to give your life to Christ. You got to give your life to Christ. He loves you and he doesn't want you to perish. He said that I wish that none would perish, but all would come to the understanding of God's love and his salvation. Uh, a couple of more scriptures. Um, watch this. They had been in Egypt for so long that they thought that bondage was freedom. They thought that bondage was actually freedom. Have you been so bound for so long that you actually think that bondage is freedom? Listen, church, freedom is to be able to worship God however you desire, however, whatever he puts in your heart. Bondage is to be able to, to not have the ability to worship God. Have you been in your situation for so long that you feel like your situation is, you know, I think I heard someone say it like this. Have you been down for so long that you thought down was up? Mm. Just think about that. Think about that. Have you been sick for so long that you thought that sickness was the norm? I want to share something with you. Sickness is not, newsflash, sickness is not normal. Sickness is not normal, church. Somebody would say, somebody say, well, here comes the pollen. Every year the pollen comes and, and it makes me sick. Well, glory to God, that's not normal, man. That's not normal. You have to realize that God is over pollen. God is over viruses. God is over sickness and diseases. God is greater than these things. And you have to realize that that's normal. It's not normal. Listen to this. I am not the, the sick trying to get well. This is what you have to say to yourself. I am not the sick that's trying to get well. I am the whale that's maintaining. I am the whale that's maintaining not getting sick. You have to understand sickness is not normal, but being well and healthy is normal. Amen. Have you been broke for so long that you thought broke was okay? Always borrowing money, always, always asking people for something, for handouts and everything. That's not the will of God. It's the will of God to, for you to bless someone else. Have you been depressed for so long that you thought depression was normal? Depression is not normal. It's not normal for you to stick your head under the cover and don't want to come out for the whole weekend. And the only reason you come out is to go to work and come back home. No, God said live. That's what he told, that's what he told Elijah, that's what he told um, uh, 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 Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forth, live. That's what he told us. He said, live, don't just exist, but live. He said, live. Depression is not living. You're breathing, yes, your heart is pumping. You're breathing your lungs and everything, but that's not living. That's only existing. And I'm not, by God, I'm not going to just exist. I'm going to live. Yes, I am. Listen to this. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, and I've already, I've already said this to you, but I want to read it to you again. It says, this is what Paul said. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Watch this, which is your reasonable service. He's not asking you to do anything that's not reasonable. He says, this is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world. Conform, that means there's a mold. This is, let me give you an idea of what conform means. There's a mold and there's something poured into that mold and once it dries, then it is the, the, the figure or the, the cut, the, the form of whatever the mold is. Listen, church, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants you to conform to this world. 
He wants you to be just like this world. But remember, we're not from this world. We are from heaven. So we cannot be conformed. Now watch this. He says, be not conformed to this world. Watch this. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Watch this. Did anybody remember the transformers? They look like trucks. They look like well, motorcycles, I guess, whatever, whatever, transfer trucks, uh, cars, whatever. And then at the blink of an eye, they would transform into the, the robots or, or whatever you call them, whatever they were. They transformed. That's what God is saying. He says, but be ye transformed from a car to a soldier. Be ye transformed from a wimp to somebody that will stand up to the devil. Be transformed from depression to joy. Be transformed from depression to love. Be transformed from uh, always drama and stuff going on to straight peace, man. Peace. He wants you to be transformed because if you live in this world long enough, you'll be just like this world. And I don't mean physically living here, but right here. That's why Paul said be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to renew your mind. How do you renew, renew your mind? This right here. This is how you renew your mind. You got to get in the word and let the word get inside of you. He says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that which ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If we're not, if we're not able to ever visit our loved ones anymore, are you still going to stay saved? If we're not able to love and hug our kids and, and, and bounce our grandbabies on, on, our, on, our, on our knee, are you still going to stay saved? If we're not able to ever come back to church again and this may continue to be the norm, are you going to stay saved? Are you going to stay saved? What if from this day forward, high school graduations will be virtual? What's going to happen? This is the first generation ever that has graduated high school. Watch this, not in an auditorium, but on TV or on some type of uh, virtual uh, show or, or whatever. Social media. How is it? I, this is the first generation. My God. What if it never changes? What, 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 what will happen if you're never able to go and to enjoy the graduation at the school where the kids walk up and get their diploma and keep going? Yes, we're making, uh, we're, we're, apply, we're uh, being applicable and we're doing uh, creative things, but what if this never comes back? Are you going to stay saved? Are you going to stay saved? What if working from home becomes the norm? What if we never went back to shaking hands and all we did was a high five and wave and we are never able to touch anybody again. What's going to happen? Are you going to stay saved? Are you going to stay saved? I remember when you could walk into the bank, I said it before, and, and they would uh, see you with a mask on and they call the police. Now you walk into the, to the bank and now without a, a mask and they won't they'll call the police because you don't have a mask in first Peter chapter 2 and verse 11 it says we are just pilgrims passing through this is not our home we must not get used to the norm of this world so stop trying to fit in stop trying to fit in because your friends are cool Stop trying to fit in because your friends got money or your your somebody has the the the, the statue of of a, a celebrity or whatever. Stop trying to fit in just because they got a BMW. Now you going in debt trying to get a BMW yourself. Stop trying to be like other people and just be like God. That's called conforming to this world. But we cannot conform, but we must transform. We must transform church. We have to transform into the way that God has called us to be. People are living in this world as if they are going to be here forever. They're living as if they're going to be here forever. The children of Israel wanted to go back to normal living. They wanted to go back to making bricks without straw. They wanted to go back to, to being a slave again. 
Listen, church, I'd rather be in the wilderness and trust God for something to eat every day than to be in a house with, with a rich and have all the money in the world and never have to trust God. I'd rather trust God. I'd rather trust God. Watch this. They looked one way, but their thought, their thought process was another way. God had delivered and protected them from snakes and scorpions in the sand. But the still, but they still went back. Watch this. God delivered them from the snakes and the scorpions in the land or under the sand. But still they wanted to go back to where they used to be back to bondage. And watch this. They had to go back through the snakes and the scorpions to get back to bondage. Listen, church, once God pulls you out, you that means you got to go back through that stuff to get back into bondage. I am not going to go through hell to get to hell. But I'm going to stay right here where I am. I'm going to keep trusting God no matter how things look, no matter how things feel, no matter what I got or what I ain't got. I'm going to still continue to trust God. He's going to still walk with me. He's going to still talk to me because they stretched him high and they stretched him wide and they pierced him in his side. That's love. That's what they did. That's what he did for us. And I, that's the least I can do for him is to love him and continue to trust him because he died for me. Church, we have to trust God. Trust God in everything that you do. Trust him in the morning when you get up. Trust him late at night when you go to bed. Trust him that he's going to take care of you while you're asleep. Trust him. We have to trust him. Question, do you want to go back to your old way of living? Do you want to go back to the things that didn't push you? Do you want to go back to the things that kept you in bondage? Do you want to go back to drugs when God has delivered you from it? Do you want to go back to alcohol abuse when God has delivered you from it? Do you want to go back to fighting your spouse and, and, and being in a bad relationship? Do you want to go back to these things? Do you want to go back to being broke again? Do you want to go back to having not enough, always having, never having enough? Do you want to go back to lying and cheating? Do you want to go back? But here's the thing. If you want to go back, you got to go through hell to get there. You got to go back through the scorpions and the snakes in order to get back to the place where you want it to be. Do you want to go back? The Red Sea was something that the children of Israel had to go through in order to get to the place where God wanted them to be. Don't you know when they got down at the bottom of the sea and the water was on the left and water was on the right? Don't you know that they wanted to turn around? Remember, they said to Moses, Moses, why did you bring us out here? We didn't want to be here. We told you to leave us alone. We was all right being a slave. Now you've gotten us out here where we don't have anything to eat. We don't have anything to drink. God said, OK, I'll give you something to eat. And he, he rained down manna. They got tired of manna. He rained down chicken. They got tired of chicken. So I guess God said, we ain't raining down no Happy Meals or no three-piece snacks or anything like that. You're going to have to learn to take what God gives you. Amen? Because in this world that we live in right now, we are so spoiled. We're so spoiled to the point that we got to have what we want. We got to have it now. And if we don't have it now, I'm going to kick and fall out and act like a baby, like somebody else is doing, but I ain't calling no names. Anyways, but we have to not be spoiled, but continue to trust God because these things that we have, it just deters us and gets our thoughts off of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So when you go through your Red Sea, just remember that God is trying to get you to a place. This is a Red Sea church. This is a Red Sea. We got Pharaoh on our backs. We got water on the right. We got water on the left. But we are trying to get to the promised land. And we have to go through the Red Sea. The Red Sea is what cleanses you to get to that point. They could not have gotten to the promised land unless they went to or through the Red Sea. So when a Red Sea comes up in your life, just thank God that, you, that, that the promised land is on the other side. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We have to go through something in our lives to get to the place where God wants us to be. And the Red Sea is the place of purification. When God has taken us to another level, it's going to hurt and we will be afraid of the unfamiliarity. Listen, church, you cannot be afraid of the unfamiliarity. 
because that just puts you in a place to trust God. When you are not afraid, and I was talking to my wife this morning, when you are not afraid, then you just kind of push God to the side. But you have to, there, fear is good if it comes from God. And it's a reverential type of fear. I fear God not because of what he will do to me, but what he can do to me. But because I'm his son and he's my daddy, I know that he's not going to do it to me. He's not going to allow. The Bible says this. He's not going to put more on you than you can handle. Amen. This is the new norm, church. The world is changing around us, but don't change around the world. Amen. This is the new norm. Where do we go from here? We are prepared or being prepared to see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you so much. I love you and I really appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for the time that you have uh, given me to come in and just to minister to you. We thank God for everybody. A special thanks to uh, for everybody that came out on yesterday and and uh, to the um, free COVID-19 packet giveaway and and everything. Thank God for you. I appreciate you. You know, it was just awesome. And and we thank God. And we want you to join us in two weeks. That's uh, Saturday, May the 30th, 2020, from the hours of 10 a.m. to 12 noon. We are going to do this again. And um, and if you'd like to come out and just share that time with us to, uh, to, to give away, or if you want to be the ones on the other side that's receiving it, we want you to be safe. We want to, we love you, and we don't want you to do anything silly and and um, and have to, you know, and, and catch that virus. So we just we're just trying to do what God's called us to do. Amen. Well, God bless you so much. God bless you so much. If this blessing, if this uh, this message has been a blessing to you, uh, and I think it we, I think it was because it blessed me. I think I'm going to go ahead and give an offering myself. <laughs> but if you'd like to give uh, the um, the address is on the screen. That is uh, Highway 154, uh, 1927 McCollum Road, uh, Newland, Georgia. Uh, 302, 30277. And you can give um, right now. You have to lick that stamp, but uh, maybe in the very near future, and we're working on it, that you can give through Cash App or through Zale. But we are definitely working on that. Amen. So we thank you so much. And again, sow the seed and receive that harvest. Because remember, when you sow a seed, God gives you more than the seed that you sown. One apple, one apple seed produces a whole tree of apples. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you so much. I thank you so much again. Thank you. I appreciate you. I look forward to loving on you, just giving you a hug. Right now, we're going to have to do the six foot hug, you know, from a distance. And we we thank you so much for that. So we appreciate you. Uh, don't forget to wash your hands. Wash your hands every day, every time you get a chance and and stay clean. I think sometimes the reason that things happen and and we get into these modes of, uh, of viruses and sicknesses is because of just being nasty. I'm just being for real. But if we keep clean, we can keep germs because it is a germ. We can keep the germs off. Amen. Well, God bless you. I appreciate you. I love you so much. And I look forward to seeing you on next week. And remember that nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. That is Romans 8, 37. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I love you and look forward to seeing you soon.